Shown in this picture is a typical sine wave produced from the power production in the United States. In this case it is given as 120 volts RMS or root mean square. What that means, this is the equivalent voltage to DC if applied to a load. It's a mathematical average. To find the peak, you would have to multiply RMS times 1.414. This will give you a peak of approximately 170 volts. To find peak to peak, that is from the positive peak all the way down to the negative peak, you would multiply the result by 2. And thus, this 120 volts out of a wall socket produces a swing of 340 volts. Period is the, is the time of one cycle. In the case of 60 cycles or 60 hertz, it's 16.7 milliseconds approximately. So in a time of 16.7 milliseconds, or thousandths of a second, an AC sine wave out of your wall socket will swing 340 volts peak to peak. And it will do this 60 times a second. Pictured here is a full wave bridge rectifier. These four diodes are arranged in such a manner as two uh, Two pair, one pair of diodes will conduct on each half cycle. This, in fact, gives us use of both half cycles for the maximum power transfer possible. And this delivers this pulsating DC to the load, in this case a resistive load. Also to note that the frequency, if, if the free, will double. If there is a 60 hertz input frequency, the new frequency will be 120 hertz. Pictured above are typical bridge rectifiers. Instead of four discrete diodes, we end up with four diodes in a single package. There are a number of voltage and amperage ratings. The large one at the top, for instance, is designed to be bolted to a metal plate to absorb excess heat. Observe your current and voltage ratings and note that there is an AC in and a plus and minus output. Pictured above are a number of transformers. Transformers having a distinct advantage of providing electrical isolation. That is, electrically there's no connection between the input side and the output side. T1, for instance, is a simple isolation transformer. What you get in is what you get out. And the others are, it's a step down, a step up, and they have various center taps. For this experiment we shall be using, we're going to be using T6. This is a step-down transformer with 120 volts in and 12.6 volts center tapped coming out. Here I have constructed a very basic unfiltered full wave DC power supply. Just like the earlier drawing, I have a step-down transformer. It's tied on this terminal block to a full wave bridge and the output is to, ele to an 1100 ohm 5 watt resistor. That is what I'm using for a load. The goal here is to measure the AC input here out of the transformer and the DC output and we're going to explore whether the book theory matches the real world. With the voltmeter set for AC we're going to measure the output of the transformer as it enters the diode bridge. And we are reading 13.51 
bolts. We're going to switch over to DC and read the output across the load resistor. In this case, I am reading 10.92 volts. If I reverse my leads, red to negative and black to positive, of course, the meter will read negative point 10.92, which is normal. Let's swap them back. And it's 10.92 volts. The question is, does the voltage readings match the theory in the book? Well, let's find out. In this case, we had an AC input voltage of 13.6 volts, but we measured an output of 10.99 volts DC. The book says the average should have been, what we should have been reading was 13.9 times 0.9 or 12.24 volts. So we seem to have too much voltage. Let's find out the reason why. The problem turned out to be the two diodes, each with a voltage drop of 0.6 volts. Subtract 1.2 volts, we get about the 10.99 volts we measured. And in all of these, we've always come out 1.2 volts high. So remember to subtract 1.2 volts. So far in constructing our home built power supply we have already went by the transformer the rectifier to produce raw pulsating DC. Our next goal is to produce filtered DC or as it is called smoothing. For that we will have to use capacitors. In this case we will use a type of capacitor known as an electrolytic. These are polarized with a plus and a minus. To uh, note that when you hook these up the polarity must be correct. Plus to plus and minus to minus. Otherwise the capacitor will act as a short, will be shorted and basically blow up in your face or the aluminum can will shoot up into the air somewhere. A capacitor is a voltage storage device. The voltage rating must be greater than the peak voltage or else the capacitor will be destroyed. To calculate peak we multiply RMS by 1.414. 13.6 volts times 1.414 equals 19.23 volts. After subtracting 1.2 volts for the diodes, I measured exactly 17.35 volts.